we just want to be the best at what we do. And we don't engage in any program, be it Formula One or the production of the McLaren 12C, unless we can realistically expect to be the best in the world. If you built a Formula One car and you wanted it to go as quick as it possibly could with massive amounts of horsepower, these are the trick bits you'd put on a Formula One car. It's British engineering at its best. We are taking on the world sports cars. Formula One has the most technically advanced gadgets. You know, it's like NASA of, of, of motorsport. I think NASA would compare themselves to us, to be quite honest. The temperature's coming out is also approximately about 800 degrees, so we've seen problems with the bumpers melting before. To actually be here looking at the car like this at this stage of the program is unheard of. This is almost as if it's in the womb of the mother. Not even the doctor has seen it yet. <laughs> this is a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. Heavy most of the time, hot some of the time. It's more than just one person's dream. This holds really the future key to 800 jobs in automotive. There's a lot riding on this working. Hidden amongst the Surrey countryside lies a building like no other. The glass and steel structure is the brainchild of both the architect and one of Britain's best automotive engineers. McLaren boss, Ron Dennis. Lots of people visit this facility and sort of cross-reference to a sort of Bond film or something. Uh, I haven't quite had a stuffed white cat presented to me to stroke at my desk, but I mean, uh, yeah, those comparisons have been drawn. Is that such a bad thing, though? You know, I mean, what's being portrayed is someone who's clearly looking to have an incredible environment in which to take on the world. It is an environment where every detail is thoroughly thought through. Ron is obsessed with perfection. Now here there's a broken tile. Most people will be annoyed and just, as I am, thinking, oh, it's a broken tile. But the reality is that when it's changed, it will be in perfection because effectively the colour won't match. It's impossible. Tiles come in batches, therefore, you can see here, this one's been changed. Doesn't that bug you? Bugs me. Big time. It's 7.30 a.m. and one of McLaren's newest recruits is on her way to work. My name's Rachel. I'm 19 and I'm currently a trainee at McLaren. So after I've done that, then I'll become a full-time production member. There's the big McLaren sign there, which is lit up red when either Jensen or Lewis wins at a Grand Prix. Rachel Melvin is an apprentice production engineer. It really does look like a back cave entrance with the spiral staircase going down. You can't really see anything until you get back up inside the building. This is not really a general entrance corridor like any other building would have. I thought at first it looked like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. You know when they've got that massive white door that just goes into nowhere. There's no question in my mind that you are being mentally decluttered and it's a cleansing experience. You are stimulated by the whiteness. I think there's a slightly sterile feel, but it's a small price to pay for someone coming into the building and then having the impact of all the colour that comes as a result of the products that we make. Comfy trainers off, big clumpy work boots on. Not really a girly type shoe, but have to put up with it. It really is a maze, it's unbelievable. Unless you know where you're going, you'll definitely get lost. If you look at these two sides, you can see that side is exactly the same as that side. It's very easy to look at things in this building and suddenly question what anal mind is behind it and what is the thinking behind it. Um, of course, it's very apparent that it's very clean. It's less apparent that it is odourless. It is also a constant temperature. We hold the whole building within one degree of 22 degrees. There's no clutter in this building. Cluttered building, cluttered mind. 
it's the attention to detail that I'm really quite well known for. And in his search for perfection, Ron hopes the building's message can translate into McLaren's newest venture. I've worked in a few garages before, which is a lot more of a mucky environment, which I didn't really like too much. This is a much better environment to work in. You don't smell of grease. You go home cleaner than you were before you came into work. The company is branching out of Formula One, and for the first time ever, they aim to create and produce a range of road cars. I'm the privileged one that's orchestrating it, but uh, I'm certainly not the only one. I am merely a chapter in the book. The first is the MP412C, which is being built in a special production line right next door to the company's Formula One cars. This is the production hall, where the whole car is built from start to finish. This car doesn't really look like a car at the moment. As you can see, great big hole there, where the engine will go when it's fitted. Gearbox is also attached to the engine. There is some interior, such as the dash and some of the carpet inside. You've got a lot of the wiring on, going on here, which obviously has to go in first. If we're moving down to this car, you've now got some brake discs and calipers on it. These are the carbon ceramic brake discs. The car's now looking more like a car. It opens this way. Move around to the front, you can also see that the bonnet's on and the front side panels are also on. This new venture is a big risk. The company has already invested nearly £800 million into what is a very competitive and established industry. It's great for engineering within the UK. Um, to have a real brand that's, that's exciting can really take the fight to a lot of brands around the world and supercars around the world. At £168,500 each, the new car is clearly aiming at high-end luxury customers. Customers who just might want a piece of Formula One engineering for themselves. But it's a big gamble for the company. I think this represents the best of world engineering because uh, there's definitely nowhere else in the world they're going to be able to match what, what our team's able to do. At this end of the building we have the Formula One team with all the inherent technologies that are needed to support it. Here are the cars that were racing just two days ago. Engineering innovations from over 50 years of experience have often placed McLaren on the winning podium. But Ron knows he'll have to enjoy the same success with his new venture if it's to pay off. I've never really embraced coming second. I've always considered coming second as being the first of the losers. Formula One technology means the company builds some of the fastest and most sophisticated cars in the world. But mass producing this car is going to be a whole new ball game. The car started life in the hands of this man and his team, chief designer Frank Stephenson. We're the guys that sit on the airplane, we don't watch the movies, we sketch. Or, uh, you know, we're sitting at a table in a restaurant, we're sketching on the napkin, we're sketching our hands. Uh, designers, I, th I think that's just a, a normal thing, it's just to sketch, sketch, sketch. Car designers like Frank use all sorts of inspiration. I personally keep some of my favorite animals in the studio. Sharks, there's a horse. I love that. I love shapes. So this is one of my favorite shapes. I get a lot of inspiration from looking at sculptures such as that. I'm never bored. Just walking down the street, you you can find so many things. Not just the shops. You can find, you know, things on the sidewalk, the type of tiles, the the, the paintings on the signs. There's always something to inspire you. So we're my bike. So my big interest since I was a kid was motorcycles so this just keeps me inspired because I look at it and think if I had it done it I probably would have ended up with something quite a bit different than that I love that guy that's what it's you know you think we're kids because we're allowed to have these toys in front of us well that's the nature of any designer you'll find that they have a toy shop around them the Fokker DR1 this is my favorite plane morning Mark hi Frank and Frank's inspiration doesn't stop with his toys. I mean, 
mean, if you look at the animal kingdom, you'll see a lot of animals that are built for speed. None of them have fat on them. They're all shrink-wrapped. I mean, you can really relate to all the energy being coiled over the rear wheels, especially because that's the driving part of our car in the back. Uh, as an animal or a cheetah, whatever, they're driving off the rear legs most of the time. And you get the undulations of the skin and the muscles actually pushing through. That's a, a, an element that we're starting to find, starting to actually bring into the design animals that have gone through hundreds of thousands of years of evolution are still around still look extremely beautiful nobody says you know that a, a cheetah doesn't look beautiful it uh, you know it's, it's an optimized design of what works and therein lies the beauty of perfected design while computers help Frank conceptualize his designs it's vital for him to bring his computer images to life something he can physically touch Good. Now I'm taking you into the uh, design studio. It's uh, probably the most restricted area in the McLaren Technology Center. Uh, very rare that people come in here, uh, even within McLaren itself. So uh, what I'll show you is what we actually do in here. And if when you come in, you'll notice there's a very sticky pad here uh, that collects anything that's on your feet. So we have a very, very clean area here to work in. What you're going to see is the clay model. And uh, contrary to popular belief, it's actually done by people who build it by hand. So mostly they're like trained sculptors who are very, very efficient at creating a physical object from a sketch. And uh, they're masters at what they do. McLaren are incredibly secretive when it comes to showing off their clay designs. Because they are constantly experimenting with the finer shapes and contours for their cars. To actually be here looking at the car like this is unheard of. Uh, we don't let anybody in. I mean, for us, it's a joy to come in and see the baby 